I think we were told that early in our career. Like, if you want a job, you better be down for anything. It's like, great, being down for anything is one thing, but then actually having the ability to do it is another. Welcome to the Secret Life Podcast. Tell me your secret. I'll tell you mine. The best way to support the show is to subscribe and share. If you haven't left a review or ratings on iTunes, please do. It helps more people find our show. And if you want to be on it, please shoot me a note at secretlifepodcast at iCloud.com. Welcome to Secret Life Podcast. I'm Brianne davis Scant. Today, I'm pulling back the curtains of all kinds of human secrets. We'll hear about what people are hiding from themselves or others. You know, those deep, dark secrets we probably want to go to our grave with, or those lighter, funnier secrets that are just plain embarrassing. Really the how, what, when, where, and why of it all. My guest today is Brianna. Brianna, I have a question for you. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. What is your secret? <laughs> My secret uh, is kind of twofold. So I used to um, be part of this program when I was, uh, not program, but company when I was in my early 20s for extra money. I would be one of those gals at a bar with tequila shots, you know, and like different companies would hire this company to get like pretty girls out in their early twenties to do stuff like that. So anyway, as before I left, I was trained to do poker dealing. Uh And so I had one day of training, which is insane. I didn't even know how to play poker. I don't know Um, how to play poker. I have no idea. So keep going. (laughs) It was pretty crazy. So, um, basically I was trained for a day And then I would casually, you know, deal uh, poker at my friend's parties, like here and there. And, and I was getting pretty good at it, but at the same time, I still didn't fully understand how to play poker. Okay. So, um, (laughs) and I think I actually like booked one job where they paid me to, to deal. And anyway, so long story short, I have an audition for a role that's a, that's a poker dealer, but she's also a character. So after the audition and after my lines, I say the producers, I was like, Oh, and, uh, fun, fun, uh, fact. Uh, I also poker deal (laughs) and they're like, Oh my God, really? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, wow, we got our poker expert right here. And I was like, yep. And then I left the room and I was like, Oh God, (laughs) hopefully I don't book this job. And then I booked it and I wasn't too worried about it on set because like, the prop, it was just between props and I figuring out how to lay the cards down. The scene wasn't about poker. It was about something else. So I wasn't really stressed about it until the director announces to the entire set. They're like, if anyone has any questions about poker, uh, this is your gal. She's our expert poker dealer and poker player. And I was like, oh, shit. Oh, my God. And, then, and I was like, oh, and then what still wasn't too worried because I was like, who's going to ask a question? And then, of course, one of the actors asked a question. I didn't know the answer, obviously, because I didn't know how to freaking play poker. And then a grip comes to my rescue and just like flies in. He's like, yeah, back when I played poker. And then he kind of like gave this actor some tips. And I was like, thank God for that grip. Um, but it was such a hilarious thing. And it was one of those times in my life, in my early 20s, where I would just say yes to everything. And I was like, yeah, I can figure it out. Oh, you want me to juggle in 24 hours? I'll do it. Like, (laughs) like, but I clear, I didn't know. I didn't know how to, I just had no business telling that lie on set. And it was hilarious. Okay. I've done that too. And I'm not going to lie. You remember like you You at the bottom of your, your resume, they're like, can you ride a horse? Can you scuba dive? Are you certified? And you're like, check, check. Yes. Yes. (laughs) I think we were told that early in our career. Like, if you want a job, you better be down for anything. And it's like, great, being down for anything is one thing, but then actually having the ability to do it is another. Well, I think it's hilarious that you booked it because normally you don't book it. But I had that same thing. I did a job and they asked if I could roller skate. And you're like, yeah, I can roller skate. I roller skated when I was like young. Like, it's not that hard, you know? Right. Yeah, totally. 
And then I booked it. And when we did the roller oh, skating no. scene, oh. the whole time, like going really, really fast. And the whole time I was repeating it to myself, like, do not die. Do not die. Oh, like, my gosh. <laughs> the things we would just throw away to the way, like our dignity, our safety, our um, lives. I mean, really, everything's on the line when you act, you guys. For yeah, listening. well, you need you need um, to book a job. You need to make a living. Yeah, you got to. It's very true. You got to figure it out. But it's just um, hilarious that I didn't even think at that age that I didn't even think to research how to play poker. Like you could have went and bought the book, like <laughs> Poker's for like, Dummies, or like watched a YouTube video, or like called a friend that I dealt you know, poker party. Like I could have figured something out, but I was just so confident and just not even worried about it. (laughs) I do want to hit on something that you said though. Did you, so you were like one of those tequila shot girls. Oh yeah. That I did that for like a year. Um, it was like, I graduated college early and I was a host for CBS. And then I also did this on the weekends. So it was really weird. It was such a weird, so I would do tequila shots and hand them out. I would also hand out cupcake, like coupons. I would drive around Calabasas and hand random strangers cupcake coupons for like some cupcake (laughs) store. And I got paid. (laughs) It was pretty amazing, actually, when I think about it. I was like, wow. Did you tell people you were doing that? Was that like a secret too? It was just like this side job? whole hundred percent secret like because I was starting to be on film and tv you know and but I all you know I wasn't getting paid that much to work at CBS at the time it wasn't um CBS interactive it was something called CBS mobile Mm -hmm. and it was the mobile division that was that lived on phones and stuff and also on cbs.com but they had such small budgets so I was interviewing with celebrities and on tv and all the stuff but not getting paid anything so I had to like also hustle on the side and do these tequila <laughs> tastings and like go to Cabo Cantina and like hand out <laughs> whatever tequila and like pretend like I was having a blast and it was just like oh man it was it was what a oh my time God. what a time but yep. that's the thing when people see people on television they think oh yeah. they're making the money but mostly yeah you know you're juggling you're like hustling right and you ha- usually have side things and you know I do music too I I think now too I've gotten the hang of kind of figuring out how to juggle it sort of but when you're first starting out especially when rates are I don't know especially in the new media world when it was still getting its footing I think it's like a hundred dollars wasn't it like 150 for like eight hours yes it was nothing it was nothing um it was crazy. It was, it was a crazy time, but it was also so fun. I mean, I think those experiences were insane, but I learned from that. Like I learned from that poker lie to like, never like, just be honest. Say, yeah, I deal. Like, do I know how to play ish? You know, like I think I kind of threw my authenticity to the wind to get that part in that moment, I think. Which have it, ha, you know, did you do young. it again? Did you do it other times? Do you remember? No, I've never done it. I only did stuff like that again. Like when you said on your resume, like I can juggle. I remember I was like, I'm advanced at yoga, even though not really advanced at yoga, but like for commercials, <laughs> I remember for commercials, I would always say like level three, even though I was like clearly level one or two, <laughs> but I just was so like, whatever, who cares? And I, I think it was just like negligence, ignorance. I don't know. It was like a whole beautiful combination of a lot of things tied up in a bow. But um, I think now I'm like totally transparent with that stuff. And I don't oh. think after that poker thing, I don't think I did. I don't think I, I lied like that again. Oh, I have. I you have? 100% <laughs> have. Because oh I think it comes from... I'll just learn it. Like, because I've taken jobs or gotten jobs where they were like, can you play the violin? I was like, I can learn to play the violin. I know how to play the guitar. Not well, but then I, they taught. And then, so I always still say, yes. I mean, I got, if I could ice skate and yes, I can ice skate, but I'm not like a hockey player, but then I had to go and actually audition on ice skates. 
what? Yeah. So I had to go and practice like the week before oh, the fallback. <laughs> my God. And you're like, look at my moves. And then I did a movie where wow. they're like, do you mind swimming in the ocean? And I'm like, I go to the beach and get in the ocean. Not a big deal. But then when you go on a boat in the middle of the ocean where it's dark. Ooh, it's a different thing. It's a different kind of swim. Yeah. And they're so, sh- you don't know what's under the water. They're yeah, like, yeah. it's safe. And I said, how do you know it's safe? Yeah. Are you under there? Like the production's yeah. like, just <laughs> jump in, it's safe. I'm like, did you, it, how do you know it's safe? But yeah, I, I still do it. Uh, I can't help it. I think it's just that we learn so young just to say yes. Yeah. And I think it's also, you know, I want to pat ourselves on the back too, because I think the positive in that is that being actors, you kind of, we're like vessels, right? We're instruments to tell stories and convey emotions. And I think that we're kind of taught to like, we're, we're hard workers. We figure it out. You know, we're like malleable. We can play different roles. We can do different things. We can, you know, I think that's the beauty of, of what we do is, is that, you know, that determination to kind of learn and, uh, the passion to, to just, you know, really get into a character. I think it's cool. I mean, but I, I will say, I don't, if I, if I were back in that position again, if it was 2020 and I was up for like a poker dealer, I, before the audition would like go on YouTube and teach myself before I even <laughs> it's not audition. Even like ask an expert. You're just like, I just will go on I'm just YouTube. Like, I will learn it myself. Like it, it was, it's just so funny to me. It was so easy. Like I didn't think in my young brain to just like, go on www.youtube.com and like for an hour, just listen to some guy talk about or girl, a woman talk about um, poker (laughs) for an hour. I would have learned so much. And I love that you talked about the yoga one. Did you book that the yoga one where you're like, I'm level three? No, but I did book a music video in college. Actually, it was a really big music video for a, for a band that was big at the time. And it was um, basically stop motion and they needed a advanced hip hop dancer. And I did hip hop all and, and ballet and was a trained dancer. But like I hadn't done hip hop since like 2003. It was like, I don't know when it was, but it was like later on. It was after <laughs> high school, basically. And so I was like, cool, I'll just pop and lock. And like, that wasn't really the style of hip hop dancing. <laughs> anyway, long story short, I, it was not what they were looking for. And I was awkwardly dancing. It made the video. It was fine. But it was like, it was it was pretty crazy. If, if you guys, it's called The Faint. I think it's called Desperate Guys was the song. And I'm the little stick figure moving and break, break dancing in quotes. And I do the same moves over and over. <laughs> that is so bad. Oh it was so God. bad. But again, I was like 20 or 19 or something. It was well, just, oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I did book one of those where I was like, yeah, I can, I can, what is it? Um, Soul Cycle, the bike. <gasps> where they're like can oh, you no. do you know how to do those classes and I'm like yeah it's riding a bike it's not a big deal and it was for oh, a huge sh- campaign oh. and I booked it and I was like <gasps> oh my god and it was eight hours on no. a, a bike and I'm did not you- kidding you oh. I could not walk the next day I was <gasps> miserable and I I was working with two like models and they were like I love whatever so this cycle. Is so yeah. cycle I go every day and I just wanted to slap them I was like I am miserable get me yeah. off this set <laughs> you know what's so crazy actually so I did this Twix commercial where I had to literally spin for 15 minute long takes because they were doing social media um spots so on Facebook they had like and the joke was that I don't stop spinning right it's like the t- the credits like Twix candy, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then I just like keep spinning. And they had a backup girl to play me in case I tripped or fell or threw up or got sick. It was crazy. And I remember feeling really sick. Like I was like, this is not, it was in the direct sun. And I was just Ugh. like, keep going. Don't get replaced because you're not going to make that money, baby. If you don't stop spinning. 
spinning. I was like, this is insane. Sometimes what we do, I'm just like, oh my gosh, the it's limits insane. of the it's human insane. body are insane. <laughs> A human body and mind, I should say. Are no, I think insane. it's. I think you need to be an actor's body and mind. They're like we're so yeah, determined. Yeah, we're just like, yeah. just don't tell them you're about to die. Just don't yeah. tell them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's also like it's it's commitment to the care. It's just what you're taught. It's sort of like that theater mentality, you know, like that old school theater mentality where it's just like it's work. You know, it's not just like you show up and it's easy. It's not supposed to be easy, you know? I think but I was never a theater actor, were you? Oh, yeah, I was. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. it's just my sheer determination and and, not yeah. to fail, you know? I think it's just but sheer. You like Beverly Hills Playhouse, which which was rooted in, in theater, I yeah, would Yeah, but I wasn't like in a play yeah. or anything. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> Look, she's like giving me yeah. my resume. I love it. I'm trying, I'm trying to give us some semblance of of um of dignity here Brianne and respect I don't have any I don't have any just let it go (laughs) I'm like but we what we do it's respectful (laughs) yeah you're trying to make it all glamour like we're doing it for the art and I was like no I I was just trying to get the money (laughs) that's true I mean there are times for sure where I'm just like if I don't finish this, I'm not going to get that money. But there are other times where I'm like, wow, I'm really enjoying like really sinking into this. Like, you know, this whole self-tape process in this world we're living in now, it's like, it's, it takes a lot of work to audition now, you know, mm-hmm. and get into a character and do all that. And I think I'm actually really enjoying that because we have the time to do it. And yeah, so that's all I'm going to say. About oh, that. I love it. I started yeah. self-taping before they were even like really doing self-taping. I'd be like, I'm self-taping. I'm sorry. I will oh, do better. Cool. Yeah, so you I like, just, you like, I love a room. I love the energy of walking into a room. I do, I kinda, but I, they weren't yeah. what they used to be. They used to be like the right. directors and producers were in the room and now they don't right. have time for that or they're on location. So the, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when I started, it would, you would go into a room and get to like play and the director would give you directions. That does not happen anymore. Yeah. I, I've had some good experience. I had some good experiences this year where it did. And it felt like, I was like, wow, if this was a self tape, I don't think I would have done as great of a job. Oh yeah. You know, just because you're working off that energy and it's like adrenaline and you're just like, I will, like, I don't know why it's just like something takes over you, but that's so interesting because I used to hate self tapes until this quarantine. And I was like, well, I guess, like you said, you just got to embrace it, let it go. And just, I love I it. I love it. Cause yeah. I feel like you can be more creative and you can yeah. like put a, put your own spin on it because half the times they don't even know what they want. Uh, being on the other side being the director and the producer half the times right I don't know I want someone to come in and tell me what the character is what the character is yeah 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 oh so crazy okay so let's go back to I I love this secret that you like said all these lies with your career which I love and I've now given myself up to which wasn't the plan, but there you go. So yeah, uh, let's tie them to these seven deadly sins. So we've got pride, sure. greed, lust, gluttony, envy, anger, and sloth. Whoa. Okay. C- should we go through each one? Yeah. Pride. Pride. Um, in that experience or just now? I think, I think let's just like the times you fibbed on your resume, you know, those secrets right. or those things. You know, I think pride did take over because I, I wasn't humble enough to admit that I didn't know how to do it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like now I think I've like been so humbled that I'm just like, yeah, I don't know how to do that. So I'm not like, I can't like you can find someone else who would do that. You know, I think there's a little bit of that. So I think at the time I was, and I was very, just so blindly confident with that. And so I do think, yeah, maybe there was some pride there. And also I was like coming, I was like a, musical theater studio. I don't know. I, I, I definitely think I had a lot. I had some pride at the beginning of my year uh, of my beginning of my career, for sure. What about greed? Greed. 
Yeah, I think like wanting all the job, like wanting and like just like you know how like when you book a job, you tend to book like a, a few more after that. There's sort of like that momentum, work begets work kind of yeah. thing. I don't know if it's it definitely was greed in the in the times of my low spots where I I was fibbing or feeling you know like lack like a lack mentality. So I definitely think that now I, I more attribute to like abundance, just <laughs> give me abundance, all the abundance. But I do think greed kind of takes over in those moments for sure. Yeah. What about lust? Huh. Lust doesn't really um, pop up there. No, for, what, I yeah. agree. What about yeah, gl- like, gluttony? There's nothing really sexy about lying about how to play poker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about, what did you, what was everyone? There's gluttony, envy, anger, and sloth. Gluttony, no. Uh, envy? What was the one after? Envy? maybe yeah I, I remember not understanding I was like how does like commercials I never used to book commercials at the beginning of my career and I was so envious of all these people that did I was like wait how did they do that how did they I just didn't I never thought I was like a commercial actor I could never book commercials and I think I definitely had a lot of envy and so I would fib to like try to get ahead <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then the last two, anger and sloth. Uh, not anger. What is sloth? Sloth is like laziness. Yes, definitely sloth. Because if I was lying, that means I didn't know how to do it. Why didn't I just learn how to do it and then write what I knew how to do? Yeah, why didn't you YouTube it? YouTube, why didn't you I said- YouTube it. Why didn't I do that? I was such a little able at 19 or 20 yeah okay you do it you do it always you do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> who do you think this secret benefited and who did it harm um it benefited me and it har and my reps who got money um <laughs> and and honestly, it benefited the show. I thought I did a great job with the character. I didn't even talk oh, about I'm the sure you did. I did a great job. I think you did a great job with the acting. But I think it harmed the, in the moment, I think it, I think it harmed myself because I was so anxious about it at that moment. So I think at, at the end of the day, I think it just harmed myself because I put myself in a position that I shouldn't have. Yeah. I mean, for me, and I'll just say my experience too, anytime I've done that, like fibbed a little on something I'm capable of doing, the amount of anxiety it created in me and oh. not enjoying the actual job yeah, afterwards, it's, I, it. it's just not worth it. No, and, no. And, and I have to say, I want to know how you're going to move forward. But for me, like one of the things I'm doing now is I am saying no. I've said no yeah. to jobs. Yeah. Which before I, I that, never did. I know. And I think that's where the turn happened with me in my career. Like after my early 20s was just like, I realized I was like, oh, I don't, there are rules out there for me that are so much more aligned with me and what I bring to the table that other people can't or something. My special sauce or the gifts that I do have, I can bring and everyone will benefit from. But I think that it took me being fearless and saying no and knowing that there was something else around the corner for me and not yeah. feeling so desperate and so like coming from such a lack mentality and really just going, no, there's, it's fine. It's not for me. And someone else can ice skate better. Or someone else can bowl better or poker deal or whatever it is better than I can. And who's the actual expert at it and let them have the job, you know? And I think they're, now it's definitely in that place because too, you know, like you said, you're juggling so many different things now in your life. I'm juggling so many different things. That time it takes to be anxious and do all that. Like we just don't have that time anymore, you know? Well, I think it's just, I think it's experience. So what, what would you say sure. yeah. to your past self or a, an up and coming actor right now? That's just starting. Ooh, I would say your authentic self is worth more than anything else who you truly are and what you're truly good at. And that will outshine everything else. I and agree. just like hang on to that and don't let all the noise and all the envy and all the like distractions kind of take away from like who you are and knowing yourself and really take the time to know yourself. Cause it takes 
time. I mean, it took me years to figure out who I am as an actor, who I am as a person. I mean, who I am as a person came first, I feel like, but I'm still figuring that out and still evolving as an actor too, you know? So I think that, yeah, just don't be afraid of yourself and who you are. Yeah. And I think also I have to hit on, if you don't have that skill, don't put it on your resume because the amount of anxiety... Doing that job Definitely. is and terrible. Never say, never say in the room yes to something. Like be honest. And that's charming. Like those, I'm sure they would have found me saying like, well, I mean, I poker deal, but I don't play. Like I, I that would have been great. I think I might have still booked the part, you know, like, so don't, don't think that you have to do stuff and don't come from a place of fear, I guess, right? Oh, and I have one more tip and I don't know if this yeah. rings true for you, but don't let your agents or managers convince you either. Because I always felt yeah. when I was younger that the people mm-hmm. that I'm actually paying, like we forget, yeah. we pay them. They don't pay us. We're yeah. paying them. And I used to get, I had this one manager and she would always make me like say yes to things I wasn't sure about. So I wish I could tell my younger self, like say no when you don't want to do something. Or, and, and, and if you're too afraid to say no, just yet, just open up the conversation with them, you know, like have it be a more of a dialogue and a mutual decision versus their decision versus Mm -hmm. yours, you know? Like it can be more of a conversation, like, Hey, like, let's talk about this. I, you know, look, I'm not comfortable doing this and, and, and know your worth, even though you don't have a big resume or you may not have a big resume or whatever, like you're still worth just as much as everyone else, you know? Yep. So yeah. Wow. Yeah. I remember that those my early commercial agents that pushed me to do all that stuff. That's so funny. You know, those three X's on LA casting, it's like, beginning intermediate advanced I'd be like advanced advanced They're like yeah just keep putting advanced I was like what <laughs> <laughs> what makes no sense oh my goodness oh my god well thank you so much for sharing your of secret course. I appreciate of course, it lady this is so fun <laughs> all right thank you guys for listening and until next time bye Thank you again for listening to Secret Life Podcast. Please subscribe, share, send me a note, and you can always support the show with a donation on our site, secretlifepodcast.com. Until next time, bye.